Hi friends, and welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman, and if you don't know me, I'm a survivor of narcissistic abuse in a queer relationship, and I'm here to help support and validate those who are or have been in my shoes and to help bring awareness of what these kinds of relationships can look like. Obviously, I'm here for my queers, but everyone is welcome here. Today, I'm going to talk to you about relationships that start off feeling like a forest fire and whether it's a good idea to pursue those or not. As you can see, if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm in my childhood bedroom. I don't know. Obviously, you don't know that. I'm telling you right now, I'm in my childhood bedroom. And also, this is my first time recording this as a uh, visual YouTube episode. Normally, I record um, on my phone through the Anchor app. So we're going to see how this goes. I do have diagnosed ADHD and it is uncontrolled. So I apologize if it is hard to watch me. I do move a lot. Um, so I recently had a friend ask me some advice for dating. They had just come out and they've been following me on Instagram and TikTok for a while. So, you know, they knew my story and they wanted to make sure that they didn't end up in an abusive relationship like I did. If you don't know this, it is quite common for people who do come out later who are leaving heterosexual marriages or relationships and they have that lifetime um, history of being in straight presenting relationships. We come out and the first person who comes along is abusive, but we get into that relationship very quickly and we are thinking that we're in love and it's too late before we realize that we're being abused. The first thing that came to mind um, in terms of advice was that if it feels like a forest fire, run the other way. I remember writing a poem. I was really writing a lot when I first met my abuser. Something didn't feel right to me and I was processing that a lot via writing. And I didn't finish the poem, but it started off, you burn through me like a forest fire. A forest fire is destructive. A forest fire is fast moving. It tears through areas of land, vast areas of land, leaving behind complete destruction. Nothing is left. And that's a horrible thing. Forest fires are terrible. They're devastating. We throw all of our resources at forest fires to try to put them out, to try to prevent them from spreading, from continuing to do what they're doing, which is destroying everything in its path. It's the same with relationships. If you meet somebody and it's all very quick, it's all hot and heavy up front, they're pulling all their cards immediately. They're telling you they love you. They're wanting to move in with you. They're wanting to spend all their time with you you're checking off every milestone very quickly and you're excited. You feel like you're falling in love. They're putting you on a pedestal. That's because you're in the love bombing phase. That is a red flag. That is something that we want to avoid. Quite often when we have a lot of childhood trauma, maybe our parents were chaotic, our relationships with them were chaotic. We have a pattern of chaotic relationships. That might be all we know. And we're attracted to those kinds of relationships because they're interesting. We get a lot of dopamine and what's the other one? I can't remember. Whatever those excitement hormones are when you first get into these new relationships that are chaotic, that you are kind of like feeling like you're chasing after this person because it's like a fleeting moment. I remember feeling like it was a fleeting thing. And I was like, what's next? Where is this forest fire going? I'm here for it. I remember thinking, but I would let you destroy me. At the time, I was aware that this was kind of an off thing that I was like, I would let you destroy me. That's not how we want to feel. So when you meet someone and at first you're thinking, this is kind of boring. I'm not super excited about this person. I'm not feeling these like massive sparks. There's no chemistry. I don't know if I like this. Pay attention to that. Sit with it. What's happening is that you're not feeling the red flags. You're, you're not going into fight or flight with that person because it's not a forest fire. It's a calm, little, long-term, sustainable flame that's just being lit and can, again, it's sustainable. It can go for a long time and it's not going to destroy anything. It's in a safe little container and, again, it won't destroy you. We have to learn to like that. You don't have to date that first person that comes along that's boring. That person that comes along that's not putting you into fight or flight. You don't have to be with that person just because 
your nervous system isn't being set off. However, those are the kinds of people that we want to start thinking about dating if we're ready to date. Myself, I'm not necessarily ready to be in a relationship. I am 10 months from breaking up with my abuser. I'm eight months, no contact, maybe a little bit more. I'm not really keeping track of it in the way that I was when I first left. Either way, I don't feel ready to be in a serious relationship and you might not either. And that's okay. But when we are getting back out there, when people are coming into our space, the forest fire feeling, that passion, that I can't live without you, that I need you right now, that this is so amazing and sparks are flying and it's intense, that is going to burn out quickly and you are going to be left feeling destroyed. You're going to wonder what happened. You're going to say, where's the fire that was burning between us that seemed like it was going to go on forever, that this was my perfect match. This was my soulmate. They were even telling me that this was a perfect match and we were soulmates and this was meant to be and fate brought us together and everything like that. And this person isn't saying any of those things. They're not putting me on a pedestal. They're respecting my boundaries. Does that mean they don't like me? Does that mean they don't really care to pursue me? No, it means that they're a healthy person. It means that they don't have to consume you they don't have to own you. They don't have to destroy you. They can respect you. They don't need you. They don't want to abuse you. They want to enjoy you and they want you to enjoy them. So I hope this is helpful. I hope that um, if you've been there, you've been through that forest fire. First of all, I hope that um, you're starting to recover. Little sprouts of hope are starting to grow again and um you're starting to realize that that's not the best way to go about dating and uh i hope that i hope that this advice is helpful so run from the forest fire y'all